Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everybody having a blessed Monday. I hope everybody being safe out there in this rain. You know, I talk, I did a sub segment uh, a few months ago about prepare for rain, right? But before I go on with that, as always, place your cross on first. No matter what time of day it is, seek God. Seek God because he'll go before you. Pray without ceasing. Do what you're supposed to do as a Christian. As always, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for this rain that you've given us. I know a lot of people are maybe ready for it to go, but you know what, Lord Jesus? Let it rain for as long as you want it to rain. Thank you for everything. Thank you for this rain, Lord God. Just don't know what this rain might be doing for us. But again, use me as you see fit to bring forth whatever it is you want me to bring forth. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. But you know, I did a segment, a few on rain. So many times, I don't know. It's like sometimes I feel like God wants me to talk while it's raining. I don't know why, you understand, but hey, it is what it is. I'm gonna do what the Spirit leads me to do. We're gonna prepare for rain. One thing about preparing for rain, you know, this day and age, you understand, you gotta be ready for whatever God wants to send your way. You understand, you know, like, you see all these things that's going on in this world, this, that, all this and that, you know what I'm saying? But if you keep your house in order, and you stay doing what God asks you to do, you gotta be prepared for whatever situation that he has for you, no matter what it is. You understand, you're gonna be ready for the rain, you're gonna be ready for the sun, you're gonna be ready for the storm because God's gonna go before you. He's gonna protect you, he's gonna direct your path in the rain. Am I saying sometimes you're not gonna go through some storms? Yes, you are, that's normal. You understand, you gotta understand there's a lot of things in life that are normal. You know, like growing up and a lot of people to this day, they hate the rain. All the rain makes me stay inside. I can't do much in the rain. Good. Maybe that's what God wants you to do. Nothing. Do as least as you can do. You know, I understand people got to work out here this day and age and do things, but be careful out here in the rain. You understand? Be careful, but prepare for it. You understand? I'm the type that I don't believe in umbrellas or nothing like that. I believe a little rain touching my body helps me. It's like a, a baptism. You understand? by God through his natural rain that's come from the sky. Sometimes I like for the rain to, to hit my head. You understand? And you should too. There's nothing wrong with getting your hair wet a little bit with the natural rain that God sends. You know, um, everybody, the baptism is a cleansing process. You know what I'm saying? Water is a cleansing thing. You understand? Water cleanses a lot of things. Cleanses the land. You wash dishes with water. When you drink enough water, it cleanses your body. You understand? It flush out all types of things. It's natural. You understand? Water is a good thing. Rain is a good thing. And rain from God is always good. You understand? I'm going to give you the, the, the story about the man that prayed that it wouldn't rain on the land for three years and six months, I think, exactly. He prayed that it wouldn't rain. He believed that it wouldn't rain. Now think about that. If you got enough faith, you can stop the rain. You can stop the rain. Wow, if you believe enough. He said if you have enough faith as a mustard seed, you can take to that mountain, be lifted up, and cast into the sea. Do you understand? Faith <coughs> can bring rain. Faith can stop rain, but you got to believe that it can do, that God is going to do exactly what you ask of him in regards to your heart. He said uh, he believed, right? Believing is living a life how God wants you to live it. That's part of believing. Letting God work on you internally. And once you start getting, once God starts working on your heart, and once you start cleansing your heart, your prayers become more powerful. Do you understand? Your belief system becomes more powerful. God can use you to do the healing that he has planned for you to do. He can use you to do anything as you grow stronger in Christ. Christ says, the things that I do, you better do even more things. 
you know, I pray one day that God's give me the strength to do so much more for his kingdom. And I pray that God gives you, the person that listens to the sound of my voice, more strength and more belief in him to do so much more, to be able to send rain, to be able to stop the rain, to be able to lift the mountain up and cast it into the sea. You see, that's the goal as a Christian, to grow stronger, to be able to be strong enough to stop the rain. They said he was so powerful and so strong in belief, so strong in faith that he prayed that it wouldn't rain for a span of three years. Wow. Think about that. Faith can do anything. If you believe, you can do anything through Christ. What's the Philippians say? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't think we even grasp the whole concept of what we are able to do through Christ for his glory. Not for us, for his glory. What we are able to accomplish through Christ if we only just believe. You know why a lot of changes in our life are not happening? Because we don't believe truly what we say. And we all fall victim, but we all have doubt. You understand sometimes? But as you grow in the, as a Christian, and as you see little small things come to pass, if you can notice the little things that God do for you, your faith in Him doing the major things are going to happen too. Your faith that He's going to be able to stop the rain if you ask Him. Or He's going to be able to bring the rain if you ask Him. Like the, you see, it was one, when somebody prayed for the rain not to come. It was when he prayed for rain to come. And during the time when he was praying for rain to come, he told, he prepped the soil. He knew God was going to send rain. He believed. So he started prepping the soil when he prayed for rain. He started prepping the soil, getting ready for the harvest. So when the rain come, all his seeds were already planted. Do you understand? All his seeds were already planted in the soil. So when the rain came, he was already ready. Everybody on the outside didn't till their land, didn't prepare their ground. They looked at uh, the man like he was just foolish. Like, why well, is he tilling the land in a dry and desolate place? But he believed. He was like, I know my God is going to send rain. So he started prepping the ground. And he yielded his fruit and he yielded his increase in his season. Do you understand, people? Faith without works is dead. You got to really understand what the concept of faith without works is dead. It means what you do for people and what you do for yourself also. You know, if you're praying for God to do certain things in your life, prep for it. Do you understand? Prep for it. You are now in your prep time. You ever heard that before? In a lot of races and all this, you are now in your prep time. Right now, you are in your prep time for the rain. You understand? You're in your prep time. So what are you going to do? You, know, you already believe. And you know if you ask him, and you ask not amiss, and you not ask for the wrong reason, he's going to give you the desires of your heart because your heart is going to be fixed on what he wants you to do and his will. You see, you got to look at all those things in order to, order to get what God has for you. You have to have your heart right, first of all. You have to believe you have to put in a little work. Not work like we think. Not your nine to five job. You have to put in work for the Lord. I mean, that's a daily thing. Just like you go to work every day for your nine to five, working for God is a daily thing. And he got work for you to do. He has a business for you to do. He has a thing that he want to bless you with. But you got to fix your heart first. That's where it begins. It begins from the inside. It begins from the inside. God always talks about you can't put old garments on new, I mean old wine and new wine skins. You got to clean the inside first. You understand? So your whole body will be full of light and God can step you into your position and everything's going to work out for the better of those that love God. He said, I know the thoughts I have for you, you know, 
lean on his promises. But in order to lean, truly lean on his promises, you got to operate in his will. You see, a lot of people forget the part about God chose David because he was a man after his own heart. You have to remember that God is trying to touch your heart first. Your heart needs fixing. A lot of times you're stagnant in life because your heart ain't right. That goes for me and anybody else. A lot of times we're not receiving or stepping into our purpose because our heart is not made right with God. So the rain is being withheld from us. You understand? And when I say rain, the things you've asked God for are being withheld from you. You understand? But you got to understand also, seek first heavenly things. Seek first heavenly things. That's what's going to fix your heart. Seek spiritual gifts. Seek things above and all else will be added to you. Do you understand? But you got to believe all of it. When when he said believe, he said the man was of like passions as we all are, but he believed. Believe. And you got to understand what that word believe truly means. All of it. Everything that the Bible says, everything that the Bible says to do, everything that the Bible says it has for you, believe all of it. Believe everything that's in the Bible. Do you understand? Don't doubt. Well, I don't think this may have happened. I don't think that may have happened. If you don't think some of it happened, check your belief system. You have to believe all of the Bible. Do you understand? Not parts of it. Not pick and choose which parts you want to believe. Not the part. You don't, I don't want to believe Jonah got swallowed, swallowed by a whale. I don't believe a serpent talked to Eve in the garden. I don't believe God parted the Red Sea. If you don't believe these things, how are you going to believe that he's going to bless you? If you don't believe the rest. Do you understand? Believe means all of it in order to receive. Believe all of it to receive. That means believe and enact and walk as a Christian in your life. Do you understand what believe means? Did I break it down enough? What believe means? You understand? A lot of people say they believe. A lot of people say they believe. But do they? You understand? One thing God had to help me understand was the word is true. The word is true. The word is true. And the truth will set you free, right? So if the truth will set you free, you got to believe it. You understand? You got to believe the truth. You can't doubt it. You can't put your own personal belief system, mix it with the word and be like, okay, I understand now. You understand? Or take some things out of it or add some things to it. You have to believe it as it is. Do you understand? You got to believe the word of God as it is written. Think about it now. Think about it. You see, that's why a lot of us don't receive the promises from God. If you go back to the Old Testament, believing also involves trust. You know, back in the Old Testament, well, they didn't believe Moses was coming back. And Moses said, I'll be back. Moses worked for God, so he was the mouth of God. You understand? Through Moses. Same way with Christians this day and age. So he was like, hey, I will be back. I'll be back, man. The people got tired and wearisome. They stopped believing that Moses will return. And when they stopped believing that Moses will return, they turned from God. And they asked for the golden calf to be built. Do you understand? Sometimes doubt and not believing can let the devil in and once the devil gets in he's gonna stop your blessings he's gonna cause you to sin against god because of your unbelief makes sense makes sense they didn't believe and then even then he gave some he gave all of them a chance to right their wrongs he said what are you gonna do you're gonna serve the living god 
are you going to serve this? Some people say, you know what? Moses had returned, I believe, once more. Even Aaron, I believe. I jumped back on the bandwagon. Look how merciful God is. He gave them a chance to jump back on the bandwagon. They chose to stay off. Well, I don't care. I'm going back to the way I used to go. I like the old ways better. I like eating grapes. I always tell this part because it tripped me out when I heard that part. We had grapes over there in Egypt. Wow. Grapes. And you got God. They can give you great fruits. And all. <laughs> he can give you so much more than grapes. He can give you so much more than wine. Do you understand? But they wanted to go backwards because of their unbelief. Now, I'm, I know that all the, the miracles, the Passover, the locusts, the smiting the firstborn, the part in the Red Sea, the manna in the wilderness, the quail, the smiting the rock and water gushing out, the throwing the root into the dirty water and making it clean. All these things, yet still, they wanted to go back. And think about your life. Think about all the things God has done for you. All the things God has done for you. I was talking to somebody this morning. And I don't know what, and I'm not, I just got to tell the story how it is. All right, all right. I can tell something was bothering him. And I was like praying in the meantime because I felt God had sent him to me. And I was like, hey, I'm like, oh, what's going on? You know, I had to start a conversation. Started a conversation. You know, and I see he was down and out because he said he'd been working about two weeks or so. You understand? He hasn't worked in a while. And he's hurting. As he's trying to get his unemployment started, trying to get this and that started. And uh, I asked him a question. I said, uh, do you pray? I don't know why I asked it. It just came to my mind. Do you pray? Just that simple question. He was like, you know what? I haven't prayed in two years. Wow. I didn't condemn him. I wasn't mad at him. I understand. But I said, I said, how long you was working for the job? Two years. Sort of, I proceeded to tell him, hey, you know, sometimes when we start getting blessed by God and we start getting what we ask for, we tend to turn our backs on him sometimes. And we not call on him that much. He was like, I thank him, but I haven't really been calling on him. I said, well, I just ended it with this. Well, just pray. You know, uh, seek him. So I know he knows how to pray because that's why God asked me to ask the question. I didn't ask nothing else. I said, do you pray? He said, I haven't prayed in years. So he knows how. God just wants him to return. And God is strengthening him too. You understand? Think about it, people. That go hand in hand with what I was just talking about. You know, show people pity. Comfort people. Comfort one another through the Lord. And all I told them to do was pray. I didn't do nothing else. You understand? That's what God compelled me to do. Tell him to pray. And it was by most likely exactly what he needed to hear. Because he said he hasn't done it in two years. You see how merciful God is? He hasn't called or prayed to God for two years. And God's still reaching out to him. And the thing is, I've been there. You've been there. We've all been there. When we fail to pray to our Heavenly Father, which is in heaven. It happens. We fall away sometimes. But God gives you chances to fall back in. I taught, did a video this morning. God doesn't want you to fall into the world. That's where the children of Israel fell short. They fell back to the world. And they fell to their doom. They fell to their defeat. You understand? Fall back to God. That's all he asking. For my children to humble themselves and come back to him. So he can send you your rain. So he can replenish your storehouses. So he can make sure your food, your family got food to eat on the table. All he wants you to do is call on him. And pay attention and pay homage to him. Believe on him. Do you understand? Believe. You know, it's simple things in this world that we overlook. That's why God wants you to look back on your past your life before the riches increase when you was down and out and 
You didn't know how this was going to happen and how that was going to happen. Just like the children in Egypt. Well, you don't know what's going to happen. And God made a way anyway. Made manna rain from heaven. Made quail come. Same way with you in your life. I'm sure you had some times in your life when you're like, I don't know how I'm going to make it through this. And God made you through it. But don't get to the point where he done brought you through so much and you turn away from him. And then you start losing again. Do you understand? You want that rain to continue to come. You want the blessing that God has for you to continue to come. But you have to continue to believe and call on him. I hope these words touch somebody in a special way. It's all about your belief system. You understand? It's all about your trust. You know, be careful out here, man. This world is trying to distract you from receiving what God has wants you to do. The world wants you to take action. God wants you to work too. Don't get me wrong. But God's work is not hard as the world makes it out to be. Or how hard the, the world's work is. God's work is easier than living for the world. If you realize it and you receive it. Because God said, come to me all those that are heavy laden and burdened and I will give you rest. You got jobs this day that I want you to work seven days a week. Even God said, give you, I'm going to give you six days. And I'll have your rest of seven days. You got this world that'll burn you out. That'll make you think you got to work so hard for everything that you got. You may have to put in a little work. But it's going to be God that provides the increase. It's going to be God that provides the rain. You just have to believe and do what he tells you to do in his word. What, what my friend told me. Uh, Christy, Bible stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. All you need to follow is those basic instructions before leaving earth, which is the abbreviation for the word Bible. B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving earth. If you can grasp those basic instructions, when I say Bible, let me reiterate, Holy Bible. I'm not talking about no other books. I'm talking about those instructions. If you follow those instructions, then the thing is, God is not expecting you to follow them all the way to the letter. Because he's a forgiving God. He's expecting you to continue to call on him so if you error, you can return to him. Do you understand? So you can keep the rain flowing. You may be going through a drought in your life right now. You may be going through a time when you're like, man, the stimulus checks are not coming anymore. You got to understand, God can do more than a stimulus check. God can do more than your job can do. He can do things like this, like send the rain. Can your boss man send the rain? Can your president send rain? God can send rain. And the thing is, if you pray enough, you can allow and God will ask you and he'll send rain for you. That's how much God loves you. Love him the same way he loves you. That's all he's asking. And you love him the same way he loves you by loving his people, loving his creation, doing what he asks of you. You understand? Giving your life over to the one that saves, Jesus Christ. That's who you follow. You call yourself a Christian. You understand? You call yourself a Christian. Follow his lead and follow his father's lead. And they three are what? One. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Do you understand, people? Have a blessed day, and I hope these words touch you. You prepare for, for rain by believing, and if you've got to listen to this video again, listen to it over and over. Because God has some words for you. You understand? It's up to you to soak it in. I told you, believing is doing, acting, showing that you're a Christian. You understand? And reading and studying his word you can't believe a word that you won't pick up that you won't pick up that you won't even pick up to understand I believe in God I believe in the Bible how can you believe in something you won't even grasp with your hands that you won't even try to open up and ask God to give you wisdom to understand it pick it up it's the bread of life. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. That's what he told Satan. Man cannot live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Can't live by bread alone. You need to live by that Bible too. You need it. 
What I told you about Jeremiah, he told Jeremiah, you see that scroll? Take that scroll and eat it up. Take these words and eat them. And after you eat them, go tell everybody what I told you to tell them. After you eat these words, let them come back out and tell them whatever I want you to tell them. Do you understand? Do you understand? You have to eat the word in order to recite it. You have to eat the word in order to live by it. You got to eat the word in order to believe it. Have a blessed day, people.